<laughs> He's currently making some sandwiches. So he might be AFK for a little bit. I we can wait. Nice, nice, very nice, Empress. We'll look at her, snap out of his dreaming state while looking across the vast horizon. Briefly smiles in her, in her direction. Hello there. Hello. Got myself a rope and grab them just in case. I I guess we're good to go. Excellent. Also, I fought my ass off for this backpack. This is one of the hard-to-earn backpacks from uh, Visions of Nazoth back in BFA. Like it took me so long. Look, it took me so many visions to to get this. You need like a full achievement, uh, and then you need like currency as well to buy it. It's like it's so tedious, dude. But I got it. There's like a a little bulb here, or like a potion or something and the backpack itself is not like there's like a scroll in the back you can put some stuff inside there are like some compartments on the left and right pretty good We'll be walking, I suppose, throughout Pandaria. John turned his back on the spot 180 degrees and jumped up the wall at Emperor's side, shaking his rump of any potential dirt. He clutched his bag in his hand and all briefly. It's over your office, he said. Sure. Ah. Uh. What is... Oh, there's a small back he has on his back. What is that? That is like like a. Are you sure this is the right workflow? Are you sure this is a, the light? No, I'm actually I'm not. <laughs> Too blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John. <laughs> Too yellow. Two dollar an ish. That's the one. Good. Cracky, let's go. Eight months with tier one. Excellent, dude. Thank you very much, Cracky. My guy, dude. <laughs>
We should be fine, fret not. I made my way along the mountain once, so getting up shouldn't be much more problematic. Climbing time! I can assure you, when I woke up here after three weeks of being in coma, or even longer, I've been walking along the edge looking for any way down. Shit. <laughs> Shit. Excellent. Uh, excellent observation. By the way, the sun should go down very soon, I hope. Like an hour or two, maybe three. Then I can finally open the window for some air. Because I don't want to get the heat inside, and it's like so fucking hot then, it's like unbearable. Then like when the sun goes down, and there's like complete dark, it's like, um... It's like pretty good to get some air inside. And it's not so hot anymore, and it's uh, very cozy then during the night. Without prolonging it, he started waving the rope, holding it to keep center of gravity just right, and then shooting the rope with the hook upwards, trying to hook it a place on the rise where the would catch and hold steady. Can you throw mine as well and hook it to something? I might miss the spot. The ropes were sturdy and their hooks went into the mountain's hills like a hot knife through butter. Which meant they quickly go to the top of the mountain without any major complications or drama. Each time John went first, taking the hook and rope from previous point, they had reached and traversing the trail ahead to help him first climb. Until they reached the top where they would find a beautiful view of the whole area and a nice pond with fish swimming in it. Holy shit! It's a long way down there. There you go. It's true that I wore this outfit because of anxiety attacks caused by contact with peers. But I wasn't always like this. My parents told me that when I was still a small child, I was full of life and verve. I climbed trees like monkeys with my brother and then there were no signs of anything alien about me. I think that changed in my teenage years. However, there's another reason why I regularly wear this outfit and you can probably guess what it is. Hmm? He looked at Empress investigatively, curious if she'll guess what he meant by that. And yes, that's what I assumed at least. Well, you once said that he hated the outfit you wear, and it's making him angry. <laughs> Just to contradict him, and not... Um, Give him the satisfaction of 
taking you over by any means. Empress tries to think on thoughts of what she just said and tries to connect connect the dots was she successful I'm not quite sure Maybe I'm wrong. I really wonder if I was right on this or not. Cat on a tree. Hydrate. Thank you. Yeah, I just hydrated. I want to do it again. I have a beer. Well, lemon beer. It's pretty cold, so it's nice. Water? I have water as well. Uh, there it is. Right here in the glass. There we go. I brought that earlier, but I didn't drink it yet, so it's kind of like mildly warm. But it's still uh, replenish, uh, replenish, uh, replenishing me. Let me hear those slurping noises. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay. Hold on. Give me a sec. You heard it? There we go. That must have been it. Okay, here we go. Um, no, not at all. Although it's a good point and good food, food for thought. Nodded his, nodded his head approvingly at Empress' words. But after a moment, he shook it and added, The reason I wear this outfit is because no one would normally suspect that someone in a silly yeti outfit might have some wicked force inside me. Them just waiting to wake up and stir up shit. When you fancy... A fight in a tavern? Who do you pick up to fight? The manly guy you just you'd be beating with a glass bottle and beating him unconscious, or the guy who looks like so innocent that he looks pathetic and you suspect has mental problems, thinking he's still still in a child child's body and he's having a hard time adjusting to adult life. Ah, okay. Now it completely makes sense then. So. It's a form of a mask you wear just to protect 
the others from possible harm. While, I mean, rather thinking about yourself, you think about others. There's one more thing I wanted to show you finally, shit. Why on the whole perspective? At some point, the delivered left top because everything is included in the letter. He croaked, scratching at his chest, in which one of the inner pockets is closed. He was extensively written letter from under the pride span. Addressed to the Miracles and partially to John. Don't worry though, I don't sense magic here, although I never do. But it doesn't seem cursed. Would you like to read it? Sure. Let me read it. Here comes the awkward part. Let's see the awkward part, and let's also try this nice iced coffee. With vanilla. Let's read it now. Okay, reading. <clears throat> I threw the previous version of the letter into the bonfire out of the nervousness in front of you. Maybe it's better. Now I can write with a clear mind and at ease. I hope this letter finds you in good health and it's all over. Thanks to you, even something as simple and mundane as writing a letter is possible when I'm free. I don't know how to start. I've never had the opportunity to write anything on a paper, but for some reason it doesn't seem difficult. Let me guess, you're reading this letter and most likely one of us is dead, and it's me, I hope. I didn't have the courage to tell you to your face and now it's too late, which is ironic given to how many things I've been able to do, but it seems to me that being free and embracing emotions has its pros and cons. I've been, I've been free, and, no, I, I've lived barely a fraction of a normal life, but I'll never forget our dancing in the middle of the night, fooling around in that little town of our, our bath, our first kiss or our first hug in the cell our bath our first kiss and our first hug in the cell and most importantly our brief yet wonderful adventure in pandaria bearing its unfortunate end and the, and the least expected moment it wasn't something that had happened to me before and you showed me how beautiful such things are having fun or just being so close to someone. Overall, in my life, I had only lived my fights and was nothing more than a tool in the hands of a weaker half. You shaped me from a shield of the weak and vulnerable into a torch of the purpose that had common goal for both of us. To break through the darkness and light my way out of the yoke of the bondage and weave my own thread of destiny so that I could do the same with you, or at least I wanted to believe that was the, that was the case. I would like to believe that, like gravity, our fate was destined for each other. I don't know how many other versions of me or you exist in the timeline or somewhere in the alternate reality, but I hope there is at least one where we are happy, living, um, where did I stop now? Uh, where did I stop? Living uh, life on our own terms and for forging a path together. Vengeance was brought uh, was 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 what brought me to you. The only language left to me was rage and hatred for everything and everyone. The only desire I had left was to gain freedom, to free myself from my former self. It. In the beginning, you were nothing more than a key I needed to free myself from those shackles. After you made me gain consciousness under the cathedral, and I didn't have to fight anyone on its behalf, I realized I needed you. Like an object I would get rid of as soon as I achieved what I intended. Except, 
Everything began to change with the time and I realized that there's more to life than just spewing rage. That is why I chose the language of gratitude instead and go back to helping you and trying to do so no matter what. By the time this letter has crumbled into dust, the memory of me will have long since been scattered like an ash into which I will have turned by then, but my gratitude goes my, much further than that for showing me freedom. I am grateful for you for giving me everything I could wish for, for oh, I could wish for and more. You know, even though there are so many things I'd like to do with you, I'm aware it's too late. Since you're reading this letter, it means I've failed or I've done something I'll regret. But I had no choice. I'm most sincerely sorry that I cannot continue to accompany you. If it's the former, however, don't mourn me, mourn me and live as I wanted you to live, free and happy. Find someone to keep up with you and stop living in envy on the past. Only one thing I'd like to ask for you. To scatter the ashes of the crusader, I tried to be for you amidst the stardust that carries the golden wind, so that the unbreakable diamond you are will you are will not be left alone in the ocean of stone amidst the phantom blood of defilement and corruption. For I believe your battle tendency will live and never fade. Unfortunately, I couldn't put into words what I feel for you. I was afraid of rejection and making a fool of myself. But in the end, I can just write it now. Now, be so kind and read the first letter of each paragraph. If you've done and we can continue now, then I do too. Tell me to infinity and beyond. Each letter, each letter of first of each paragraph. In. Oh wait. I. La, love <laughs> you. <laughs> nice, dude. That's a nice touch, dude. <laughs> Learned how to make ghoulish, silly, the sparkle I saw in your eyes and the enthusiasm with which you ate it when you also stole my plate meant I could stay angry with you for long, so I decided to leave a little surprise on the back of the card. Now everything is in your hands. Only yours, pride, edurism, prideful. Clearly crossed out but barely discreditable expression on his name given in the honor of infinity dragonflight. Fuck the infinity morons, you're the only one who matters to me. In small font of the very bottom of the card, if by, by some miracle the letter is read by John Doe, yes you, it means the person I loved is dead because of me spell broke free. What's behind it? Bravo, you got your body back. Enjoy your freedom. I don't think my next coming will herald the resolution of your troubles or cause them. If I come back at all, probably after years of tormenting ourselves, I have finally won at least your freedom, and you have become probably a full-fledged worgen. Con congratulations. The rest is up to you, idiot. Ghoulish a la chef pride. On the back of the sheet you will find comprehensive instructions for preparing the most delicious stew you will ever eat, from the hand of the individual commonly known as Pride. But the question is, how could someone like him, a warrior with no cooking experience, preparing such a delicious dish without ever having anything to do with the cooking before, did his desire to impress a woman give rise to his superhuman culinary skills, or was it an innate talent? Or was it simply that he had a bright future as a world famous chef, but the woman who came into his world turned his life upside down? We are unlikely to know the answer to this question, so let's not pursue the subject further and move on. In the classic way, the main thing to, to mention here is what needed for cooking. Things like ladle, a wooden bowl, a cauldron and a chopping knife. Then we move on to the ingredients, which is actually the most important thing. Well, almost. So a sole portion of a meat will be needed here, pork recommended, which is for someone like Darthir shouldn't be much of a problem. We fly over the first other village and have a takeaway. Then we set off to get the rest of the stuff, namely honey, beer to pour la later, and later, and cooking oil along with a cream. We focus on vegetables, which means carrots, onions, garlic, peppers. One of the last things we need to stock up are on additives such as pepper and salt and mar marjoram. 
Marjoram. Okay. Last but not least, in fact the most important, the black shimmering sands of time, which will stop it. So that you can enjoy this peace and quiet with a person you care most about. For whom making such a stew is eminently important. So let me now take you one last journey, dear reader, and show you the step how to prepare our stew. We dice the meat and sprinkle a little pepper and throw it into the hot pot with the oil poured over it, over it to transfer it after a few minutes for a wooden bowl next to it. We then reach for the carrots, peel them, cut them up and also throw them into the same pot to get the same nicely fried and browned and also take them out of the cauldron for the moment. Although I'm not too keen on onions, they are nevertheless essential to this dish. We peel them to being careful not to shed any crocodile teals, chopping them up into small pieces to then throw into the pot, followed shortly by the garlic, as then throw uh, as well. Did I mention it needs to be chopped too? By the way, are you still there, meteor <laughs> reader? We're already three quarters of the way through. Can you stand a bit more? If so, congratulations, we're moving on. <laughs> to our garlic and onions, we, tr we throw in the previously sauteed uh, carrots and sweet peppers. We leave half of the veggies in the pot and take half out. No slacking off with a exclamation mark. The halfway point here, the last straight, you can do it, readers. I believe in you. Next, the aforemented beer to the pot. You didn't, you didn't drink it, did you? Let's hope not. Also, remember that the beer must be heated, otherwise the meat will be rubbery. Now, add the honey and marjoram or other flavor, uh, favorite herbs if you have any in your possession. When the liquid has boiled, raise the meat like a drakteer under a cathedral. In Polish, raising meat and choking a person sounds the same. Unfortunately, not in English, which is pity beautiful pun. For about 30 minutes until most of the water has evaporated, the meat is tender and takes on a dark brown color. The last thing you need to do is add more pepper, salt and then add the remaining vegetables, leaving the simmer for the last 5 minutes. Just pour in some sour cream at the end and stir it to cement our dish. And that's it! Congratulations! You've reached this point hopefully without a failing asleep, falling asleep. Voila! Enjoy your meal and may the goulash taste good. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. This was a wall of text, man. My god. Holy crap, this was a lot. So, from this letter, now we know... Uh, that Pride was in love with Domirakras. The whole time. And... Uh, that's very actually, th that's very intriguing and very uh, exciting to hear and like uh, very interesting at the same time, you know. So and let's just continue the RP here. Closes the letter and hands it over back to John. I I don't know what to say. I like the cooking recipe. But never in a million years I would suspect that he was in love with her. Why did you share this letter with me? Isn't this a bit personal? Or actually a lot personal? Oh, hey, Naman. How's it going, dude? Long time no see.
This iced coffee was really good, dude. Love the vanilla flavor. It's pretty nice. Thank you for the hydrate. I just had it. I just had iced coffee. It is it is excellent, dude. Ice cold and vanilla flavor. It's it's really good. Tartar beef? Well, I know tartar, but never heard of tartar beef. Is it like a beef with a tartar sauce? But yeah, John, like, but this letter was mind blowing, dude. You definitely put a lot of effort in it. Like, holy crap, man. This was like a wall of text to read. The raw beef with a mustard sauce. Mmm. Beef. Excellent. Scratches his head awkwardly, looking at Empress, and he picked his letter, hiding it where he had previously pulled it out. He won't know anyway. It's not my letter. And I wanted you to understand how I must have felt after all this time reading it. Shook, huh? He gazed into the surface of the water and snorted under his breath, amusingly slight, amused slightly. He, is, he has had a better adventure in less than a month than I've had in many years. Someone I thought was nothing more than a mindless killing machine. I just had it for grade 7 Vagu. I don't know what Vagu is. I heard of it, but I have no idea what it is. But him in love and a kiss, a hug, a bath too? He really loved her than if she had such an influence towards him. Japanese beef, most expensive and best beef in the world. Isn't that called Kobe beef? I think I watched a video on it. Isn't it isn't that Kobe beef? I wonder if there's an actual grave up there. Or you never know what what might be up there. I've never been to this place, so I don't know what's up here on this uh, mountain. Oh, it's just a small temple. Maybe these flowers grew over the grave or some shit like that? Oh, oh what the hell? <laughs> John was prepared for this. To say that expression of John's face is depicts as he has seen a ghost or at the very least fainted is like nothing, nothing at all. With his eyes as wide open as large gold coins, his greasy sweaty golden fingers, he exclaimed aloud, What the fuck? seeing the whole area in a completely different state than he had found in a few weeks ago. The ground was overgrown with all sorts of lush vegetation, as if no one had visited this place for a long time. All 
all due to magical growth caused by the saturation of the area with the magic of the brown sands causing temporal acceleration of the growth of everything in the area. However, this was at odds with the state of the hole that was that would have indicated a grave until recently. It was a large crat crater that clearly indicated that its epicenter was caused by an explosion or some explosive or ordinary grenade. No sign of the body or anything related to the previously corpse that's been there or it would seem. Huh? Sound like how you remember it? No, no, it's empty. Can be. Blink sighs nervously, wiping them afterwards with both hands. Assuming he must be dreaming. She's gone, Empress. Con? Con how? Seems like something exploded here. Well, anyway, he turned and looked at the horizon, enjoying the panorama of the local area with his eyes, glad to finally be have it behind him and managed to tell the story from the beginning to end for the first time in his life to be heard and understood at least that's what he would like to believe he stroked him for said calmly with a wink thank you for everything you are my best friend indeed <laughs> of course john and try to understand everything and I and I hope you you help me mutual hatred for the both of us <laughs> she smiled and sicker said that ready now for the nice glide back down
and I don't use breath through his nose, nodding vigorously. As for him throwing you off the mountain, if if he woke up, I don't think he, that would happen. I'd like to believe that all of this improved by my relationship. Okay. You sit on these, you put your legs into the little cockpit in front, and you tie yourself just in case of emergency. They also have a detachable parachute in case something goes wrong. You pull this red string here in case something happens midway, but that shouldn't be the case. These things are designed for long flights. Here, she hands him the rope. Sit down and tie yourself up properly, and then you just push yourself off a mountain, and it will boost you in front. You navigate left and right with these little steering handles. It should be quite alright. Now we give him the... One of the goblin gliders. Aim for the bushes, threads to give rope is damn you that. Hoping she understood the reference. <laughs> Try not to hit that tree. Oh, you've seen that scene, right? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. for the bushes. <laughs> nice. You need to, I need to watch it first. I mean, uh, when I'm streaming, it's like super laggy for me, so it's like... Uh, hold on. Let me see. Two minutes. Aim for the bushes! <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's pretty nice, dude. This way, John. <laughs> nice. This is pretty nice, actually.
Where's John going? He's going into the mountain. No! Telling people about him. Yeah, I suspect that would ha that wouldn't happen. I trust you. After all, you're the first person outside my family that learned everything that's been there to learn. Blush is a bit that gives him a very fast cheek kiss for being such a good guy, John. She grins and says, okay, back on the road then. <laughs> Nervously touched himself on the cheek after the kiss, not shying away from it because he thought it was a nice gesture and he didn't mind. He laughed under his breath.
I guess we're gonna chill here for tonight. Uh, I'm gonna go and edit this into smaller highlights for the YouTube uh, highlight and video. Thank you everyone for sticking around and uh, following this little story that we had, like this little side story. Uh, thank you for the hydrates, uh, crazy Naman, cracky with a tier 1 sub for 8 months. Beautiful, we also had a follow, but that was like a couple of days ago, when I was offline. Either way, either way, you will be able to watch all of this into a smaller highlight on YouTube. Where I'm gonna highlight the most important parts of this uh, of this story, and how it uh, developed basically. So um, thank you for watching. Have a good one, and I will catch you guys hopefully uh, soon with um, some more RP, possibly in Stormwind or somewhere else. We'll have to see. I'm not quite sure yet. This has been very random, so I might continue this some other time. Uh, have a good one, and I wish you a pleasant rest of the evening. Bye.